المتبشرين الغر المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين وحجته على العالمين الحجة بن الحسن صلوات الله عليه وفداه أرواح العالمين واللعن على أعدائهم أبد العابدين ودهر الداهرين اللهم كل وليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتع فيها طويلا قال الله العظيم في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد نصركم الله في مواطن كثيرة ويوم حنين إذا عجبتكم كثرتكم فلن فلم تغني عنكم شيئا وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت ثم وليتم مدبرين أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم In this great night, the night of destiny, to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam, Al-Imam Sahib Al-Asr Wal-Zaman, please recite aloud salawat ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. So of course, every sect and every religion, and even those who do not believe in God, they say that we are right. Especially, Especially if they if come they from, from a lineage of a belief. Of a belief. For, instance, For instance, if someone, if is, someone Christian, is Christian, so Christianity, Christianity is, is the right religion. Right religion. If someone is Jewish, someone is Jewish or, Muslim, or Muslim, and he comes and he from, comes from a, Muslim a Muslim or Jewish, or Jewish lineage, lineage, then, then Judaism, Judaism or, Islam or Islam are the right religion. The right religion. If someone is Shia, Shia so Shiaism. For someone is Sunni, so Sunnism. So we as Shia, can we doubt in our religion? In a way that we say, as we tell other people that you are probably not the right religion and you have to believe in Islam or you have to believe in the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, they might say they the might same say thing, to thing to us. So how we can, how we can prove that prove we that are we right. right. And of course, of course it, differs it differs when we talk to someone who's not Muslim or someone, or someone who, is who is Muslim. Because if someone believes in Quran, we can bring evidence from Quran. From Quran, we can prove the imamat and leadership and successorship of Ahlul Bayt. Can they doubt in Quran? No, they can't. They might be able to come to some verses that we use and start to think critic about those verses. But, but to come, come and, reject and reject the whole ideology, ideology of Shiism Shia and, and the whole the verses, verses that, that have been used have been or can be can used be to prove, prove Shiism, Shi that's something impossible. That's something impossible. Why, Why it is impossible? It is impossible? Because it's very, it's obvious. very obvious. The only thing that they can bring, they can, bring they can say, okay, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Hassanan and of course Lady Fatima up to Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam in Quran in a way that be doubtful. Why? Why? It was easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to address the nation that he appoints Ali ibn Abi Talib as the successor of the Prophet But he didn't do so. It means that even if we say that Imamat of Ahlul Bayt is something Important, important, compulsory, compulsory viral, viral, but it's not but that, that important, important to a level that a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needed to address the nation, the nation frankly, frankly and openly in Quran, Quran about, it. about it. But this approach, but is, this wrong. approach is wrong. Why it is wrong? Why it is wrong? Because, because at the end of the day, Allah the subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. And we don't and need, we don't need 
to teach Allah how he has to pass the information to us. The only thing that we need is we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to explain to us, to teach us, to address us, to pass the information, to tell us his orders. How? How? We cannot interfere in that field. It's up to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me give you some examples from Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Israelite to kill a cow. And Allah ya'murukum an tadbahu Okay, that's it. And then they asked, okay, can you tell us about the color of the that cow? And where can we find that cow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only told them that tadbahu baqarah. He didn't give them any detail. And then they asked for details. So sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders or pass his orders, pass his requests and demands. In the way that he likes. We cannot tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need the information to reach us as we like. No. People used to do that to prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Used to ask prophets of Allah to do miracles as they like. And we do not. We need you to fly. Even if you fly, we're not going to believe in you. So why should I fly? <laughs> we need you to bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels in front of us. What are you talking about? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't follow the desires of you tiny little creature. You're so humble and so nothing. You're nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he won't listen to you. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَقَدْ وَصَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ الْقَوْلِ He will pass his orders to you. But how? It's not your business. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Quran? He did not mention the name, but he described Imam Ali in Quran in a way that no one can deny that. Let me give you an equation that I found. Uh, I think it was nine years ago, I was speaking uh, on the other side of the street, a sajjadiyah. Okay? The other sajjadiyah. Hazrat Imam Sajjad. Meanwhile, I was reading Tafsir al-Fakhr al-Razi, a Tafsir al-Kabir, so-called. I was trying to find every verse that talks about Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam and go to Tafsir al-Fakhr al-Razi and see his explanation to that verse. What was the conclusion? The conclusion was that I reached that any verse that somehow is related to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Fakhr al-Razi tries to either doubt in its relation to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam or if he accepts the relation to Ahlul Bayt, he rejects the meaning that we as Shia say. But sometimes he misses, you know, because the haq is so strong that no one can hide the haq. Okay, if you want to sleep, once I entered a house of one of my relatives, it wasn't the Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Alaykum as wa rahmatullah. And I saw him putting blanket on the windows and screwing the blanket to the wall. I told him, why are you doing that? There is a curtain behind the blanket. He said, yes, I don't want any light to come so I can sleep in the morning time. I told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that for you at night time. You don't need to nail a blanket on the wall. Just sleep in the night time. In other words, you cannot hide the sun. You cannot hide the sun. Facts in Quran are like suns. No one can hide the sun. So Al-Fakhr al-Razi, when he comes to tathira, he says, yes, this verse is about Ahlul Bayt as well. Ahlul Bayt that we believe they are Ahlul Bayt. So Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful, Lady Fatima and Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan, Sayyidah Shahab Ahlul Jannah. 
And then he says, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was talking, addressing uh, the ladies, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lastunna, so the terminology, lastunna. And then he suddenly just changed it to uh, enter Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt that we believe that they are Ahlul Bayt, in this verse. Why? Why he did that? So this verse contains who? Contains Imam Ali, Lady Fatima, Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and the wives of the Prophet. This is what Fakhrul Razi says. But he misses something. Where? When he talks about Ayatul Mubahala. He says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended Ayatul Mubahala and revealed Ayatul Mubahala to his Prophet, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعَنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Then he says, أَجْمَعَ And I'd like each one of you to go and see Fakhr Razi's tafsir when he comes to this verse. أَجْمَعَ أَهْلُ التَّفْسِيرِ وَالْحَدِيثِ عَلَى أَنَّهُ لَمَّا نَزَلَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةَ أَخَذَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ بِيَدِ فَاطِمَ وَعَلِي وَالْحَسَنْ وَالْحُسَيْنْ إلى المباهلة أخذ بأيديهم ثم قرأ إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا. When Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed this verse to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the the Prophet took the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib, a lady father, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, and he went out and he recited إنما يريد الله. Where are the wives of the Prophet? If they are amongst إنما يريد الله and you Admit, confess, I can say, that the Prophet took the hands of Ahlul Bayt and recited the verse. This is very important. He says, Ajma'a. So everyone, all famous Sunni scholars say that the Prophet took their hands and recited إِنَّ مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيَذَبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْسَ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهَرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا So, اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى شهر طبعا هذا يمكن تحقيق عشرات الساعات هاي الصلوات ما النصف ساعة تحقيق فالريد صلوات حيدرية سنت حق cannot be hided and too many verses in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Ali ibn Abi Talib in a way that no one can deny the relation between this verse and Ali ibn Abi Talib. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَيَأْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَكَعُونَ While they are doing the record, in the state of record, they pay sadaqah. Who pays sadaqah in the state of record? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about someone and that person is Ali ibn Abi Talib and everyone say that. Of course, Fakhrul Razi doesn't accept that. He does the tafsir of this verse and he says, يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةُ وَهُمْ رَاكُونَ It means that يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةُ and they do ruku'ah. Okay, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a distance between salat and ruku'ah? Why? And then why he said, وَهُمْ raka'un." He says, ruku' is very important. No. Sujood is very important, not ruku'. Sunni and Shia narrate that the Prophet says, أَقْرَبْ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدِ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي السُجُود. Not for ruku'. So why, what is so important about ruku'? Nothing. Nothing. What is so important about ruku' is Imam Ali, who paid the sadaqah while he was in the state of ruku'. Nothing so special about Ruku'. The special thing about Imam Ali. So in these verses, in Surah At-Tawbah, which is a very, 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 very important Surah. I can remember once I've heard uh, Ayatollah al-Shirazi, Rahmatullah alayhi, Ayatollah al Uthman said Muhammad al-Shirazi, talking about this chapter, Surah At-Tawbah. And he said, this is one of our most important surah. I couldn't understand why. And then I went and I saw the tafsir, I read the tafsir, and I actually, I had the classes. I 
had a tafsir class for Surah At-Tawbah, relying upon Ahlul Bayt's interpretations. And it's really, really very important surah. From the very beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ali ibn Abi Talib. Bara'atum min Allahi wa Rasulah. So, what that should do with Ali ibn Abi Talib? Yes, the Prophet sent Abu Bakr to recite surah al-bara'ah. And then angel Jibra'il was descended. No. Go and take surah al-bara'ah of him. Send Ali ibn Abi Talib. Let Ali ibn Abi Talib read and recite surah al-bara'ah upon mushrikeen. And Imam Ali says, Imam Ali says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Moses to go and talk kindly فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا to Pharaoh. Musa said, إِنِّي قَتَلْتُ مِنْهُمْ نَفْسًا فَقَاهُ أَنْ يَقْتُلُونَ I'm fearful, you know, I killed someone, one of them, my mistake. And Imam Ali says, I killed too many of them deliberately. And when Allah requested me to go, I went to Mecca alone and recited Surah Bara'ah. And no one would dare enough to stand up and object. Bara'atum min Allahi wa Rasulah. Without any basmala, without basmala rahmah. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not willing to show his mercy to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing his power to you. So it's very, very important chapter, Surah Al-Bara, a very important chapter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Islamic government, of course, Islamic government, we talk about the Prophet, Prophet's government, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oppose Mushrikeen's government. And then we reach this verse, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا This is very important verse. Very. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already given you victory in too many occasions. And on the day of Hunayn. What happened the day of Hunayn? Muslim soldiers were more than Mushrikeen soldiers. Yet, they were defeated. So it's not about number. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرًا وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ Abu Bakr said, yes. We are too many. No one can defeat us today. فَلَمْ تُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا Your number couldn't help you. Who helped them? لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطَنَا كَثِيرًا وَيَوْمُ حَنَيْنِ How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you? By Ali ibn Abi Ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib was the only one who did not run away of the enemy and stood up there firmly and defended the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then, okay, so look at this verse: "Fi mawatana kathira wa yoma hunain ida ajabatkum kathratukum falan tughni ankum shay'an wa zaqat alaykum al ardu bima rahbat." You thought that said the Prophet would 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 get killed, the Islamic country would get demolished. But that didn't happen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُؤْمِنِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended His sakina. وَأَنزَلَ جُنُودًا لَمْ تَوْرَوْهَا وَعَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ وَذَلَكَ جِزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeated the enemy. And then He said, ثُمَّ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَعْلِ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive whoever He likes. So they were hypocrites amongst our prophets, companions. Who are they? Go and read history. I'm not going to tell you. But for sure, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the commander of the faithful, was there. And he was the main cause for the army of Islam to win. Do you need any more descriptions than this? To believe that Ali ibn Abi Talib is the successor of the Prophet? No, we don't need anything more than that. Okay, we come to another verse, and of course we don't have that much time. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِ نَفْسَهُ تِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet 
to ask Ali ibn Abi Talib to sleep on his behalf. When some Sunni scholars come to this verse and the interpretations of this verse, so, so all Sunni say that, yes, Ali ibn Abi Talib slept on behalf of the Prophet. But we cannot say that, you know, that's a very important thing. Why? We cannot say that's a very important thing. Because he knew that he wouldn't get killed. How? Did he tell you that? The only thing that he asked the Prophet, that would I be able to protect my religion and protect you if I do so? The Prophet said yes. And that's it. Who gave him the guarantee? Did you give him the guarantee and short him? So they cannot reject the history. They try to manipulate. The chain changed its meaning. But it's unchangeable. You cannot hide the sun. So if we go from very beginning of Quran, Surah Al-Basmala, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Rahim, up to the end of Quran, Surah Al-Nas, we see hundreds of verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks directly about Ali ibn Abi Talib. Should we disregard all of those verses and say, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib in the Quran. And that's why we don't believe in him. Seriously? Only a fool person would say something like that. Like when the Prophet وسلم, split the moon in half, they were able to say, no, no, yes, that happened, but probably it was something by nature. It's Mother Nature did that. Really, you requested, you asked, and then that the Prophet did, and now you say that Mother Nature did that? That's ridiculous. So it's not lack of evidence. Rather, it's lack of determinations. Are you determined to find the right path and follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Then you will find Ali ibn Abi Talib, obviously, in the book of Allah, in Holy Quran. Actually, if you cannot understand the relationship between Imam Ali alayhi salam and the Holy Book of Al Quran, you would not be able to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. At all. So yes, there is no doubt in Shiaism. We need Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. They are a must because they are our leader, they are our guidance, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed them. And the evidence for that is in Quran al kareem When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in too many verses about Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, okay. Is it possible for Ahlul Bayt to be the best, but someone else sits on the pulpit of the Prophet? This is ridiculous. Yes, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the most knowledgeable, as Ibn Abi al-Hadib says, you know, on the first page of Nahjul Balagha, Sharh Nahjul Balagha, Ibn Abi al-Hadib, when he comes to explain Nahjul Balagha, he says a phrase which is full of contradictions. What he says? He says, Alhamdulillah alladhi qaddam al-mafdool ala al-fadil l-hikmatin. I praise Allah who, who preferred someone who is ignorant upon someone who is knowledgeable for a reason. Really? It's like if someone says, Alhamdulillah alladhi zalama li hikmatin. I praise Allah who oppresses for a reason. Would Allah oppress someone? That's ridiculous, man. Why he says that? Because he cannot deny the rituals of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yet, he has the love of the enemies of Ali ibn Abi Talib in his heart. He cannot deny the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he cannot accept the haqq. He says, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prophet them upon. We don't know why. You don't know why, but we know why. Do you want me to tell you why? The Prophet said that. Ya Ali la yuhibbuka illa tahirul mawlid wa la yubghuduka illa waladu zina. That's why. 
if you can't, we don't blame you. Something is wrong. I won't be able to cure a Down syndrome person because the problem is genetic problem. And this is exactly what the Prophet says. Whoever rejects the fadail of Ali ibn Abi Talib, something is wrong with his genetic. We cannot fix that. We cannot just simply give him an antibiotic and fix the problem. If he really, really stays stubborn on his faith, that means something is wrong, unfortunately. And I can't fix that. And no doctor around the globe can fix that. No doctor around the globe can cure a Down syndrome person with all due respect. We all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten us with the ma'rifah of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as salam, ma'rifah of Amir al Mu'mineen. Hada wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammadin wa alihi al tayyibin al tahirin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على وليك 